Hi and welcome to another Is It As Easy As It Looks tutorial. I made this little box last night um, using this cereal box and I thought I would, instead of finishing it today and making my second one, um, show you how I did it. I found some pretty decent tutorials on the internet, um, but I thought I could do one that was maybe a, a little bit more for beginners um, as opposed to people that craft pretty frequently using scrapbook paper because this is one of the first times I'd really used scrapbook paper and it was definitely the first time I'd used Mod Podge. So what you're going to need is a cereal box. I'll put that one to the side. You're going to need just a blank piece of paper. This is the leftover one that I had used for the first one that I just showed you. A piece of scrapbook paper. I'm doing mine in two different colors, which is why I have two, and you can see it's shiny, glittery. I got them for sale at Joann's. They were normally a dollar each. They were 50% off, so I got them for 50 cents. I used a Sharpie, a Mod Podge. I got this at Dollar Tree, and I'm using a ruler, some scissors, and an ink pen. The first thing that I did was cut my box out. So I'm doing the same dimensions that I did on the first one. And hopefully you can see this, possibly not. But I just took my box, I measured six inches up, do a little line there, a little line there, a little line there. I'm not the best with straight lines, so I have a tendency to go a little overboard, line it up. I use the Sharpie. I thought it would make it easier to see it. So now you can see my straight line six inches up from the bottom. So those are the first dimensions that you'll need. Then I take my scissors. I'm going to cut here, here, and here. My box now looks like this. Um, then I just kind of eyeballed an angle on the sides. I just took my ruler, put it right here where I cut, and then I just did three inches roughly. I have to put this down to do this line. And it on the inside and about three inches and box looks like this now flip it over to the back and I'm going to draw a line from the bottom up to eight inches as I believe what I did here. I just cut it to the line. As I believe what I did here, I just cut it to the line, which is about eight inches. So take the box, get my Sharpie. Put my ruler at eight. Can't see me very well. Put my ruler at eight. I just I 
now I have to start covering it with scrapbook paper. I covered the first one with red and I also cut out some stuff for the inside using the rest of the piece of scrapbook paper but I decided since I wanted to do one red and one that white color that I was going to put the white on the inside. So I'll use these pieces that I cut out for that one and hopefully they'll be the same dimensions. And this is all just one piece of scrapbook paper, the 12 by 12 size. So first thing I'm going to do is grab my scrapbook paper. Okay, so here we go. Um, this is what's left of my paper. And I have a front piece. I have a side piece. And I have another side piece. That's all out of the same piece of paper. Simple as pie. Then what I'm going to do is get my paintbrush and I think I said last week that I would prefer a sponge brush which is true but in case I didn't that's the case this is my Mod Podge basic stuff I'm going to shake it onto the back get some out of there of my paper now this is part of the is it as easy as it looks part because this is not something I do very often. And this is what I wanted the scrap piece of paper for as well, which I believe I had said that in the beginning. So I'm just gonna paint it all on. Make sure I get all these edges. That is, from what I understand, one of the most important things you need to do when using Mod Podge is getting those edges nice and wet. So stick that there for a sec. Then you apparently also do the front of this. If there are any Mod Podge experts out there, you can always comment on the video and tell me if I'm doing it wrong, so far it's worked. At least the other one hasn't fallen apart yet, which is, I suppose, the point. So. Hopefully you can see what I've done. I just am pushing it down around the edges. I'm trying to make sure that I cover the whole front the cereal box, which I believe I have. I also accidentally got a, some Mod Podge there, which is not that big of a deal because I'll be putting it on there when I'm done anyway. So what I'm going to do now is simply place it on the table. This is where you need your big books. And I'm going to stick a big old Harry Potter right in there and one on top and that's just going to provide it some pressure for a little while to get the Mod Podge and everything to stick and dry and make sure it's nice and flat so I'm going to leave this there for a little while while it dries um, 
I don't know, a couple minutes, not long. And um, then I'm going to do that with the other two sides, paste on the back of my paper, paste on the cardboard of the box, and glue those on. And I'll just show you how, since I don't have to come back and turn the camera back on for that. Merely, when I do those, I'll just turn the book this way and let that one dry a little bit. Then I'll flip it over. I'll put the spine at the bottom, but then do that side. So when I have those three sides finished and dried, I will be back. Got it on all the sides. Whoops. I don't need to do that. What I'm doing now is sealing it. So that was entirely too much. I'm going to have to use this on this is one of the sides too. But you merely do a thin coat, thin being the operative word because I put way too much on, and just carefully go back and forth. Like I said, I used too much, so I've got quite a bit on my paintbrush, so I'm just going to paint it here as well. Hopefully you guys are being able to see at least some of this. This, I don't even know why I'm doing this. I think this helps seal it in, prevents it from peeling off. Might just be doing this for no reason, but that's what it said on the Mod Podge website to do. So that's what I'm doing. So I actually have enough on here to do all of it. So. Still a little too much on the front. I'm just gonna go one more time over it with my brush. Make sure I didn't get any thing in there. Anything, I mean bristles from the brush. I don't want obviously don't want bristles from the brush on my thing. So that's it. I'm going to um, let this dry. What I'm going to do is let this dry while I'm letting this dry. I'm going to cut those inside pieces I showed you out of the leftover and then I'll switch. So while this one is drying, I'll put the inside of the white, sorry about my arm, on this red one. So I'm going to trace. I'm not sure I actually will trace. I think I'll measure the inside of this one too because I think despite the fact that they're the box for the same cereal, the measurements were might be a little bit different because I noticed that the box is not square. Okay, so I was actually able to just trace the red pieces, but obviously you guys don't have red pieces. So um, again, in the end, that's all I had left of my scrapbook paper. So, um, and again, getting my Mod Podge, and I'll start with the back. Let's see. I want to see how far down that goes. It doesn't go all the way, but that's fine with me. So. Again, going to this time I will use less because last time I think I used a little too much. Just a little bit more. But from what I could tell. The trick with Mod Podge really was to use thin, even layers.
Okay, next step. While this one is finishing up, um, I'm gonna cut out some labels. I just made these on my computer, cute little chalkboard looking labels and printed them on cardstock. So I'm just gonna cut the two out that I wanna use for these boxes and I'll Mod Podge them on the front as well. So I'm gonna cut it out. I'm gonna remember to put Mod Podge on the back of it, plus a little bit right here and slap it on. So I will show you what that looks like when I am finished. Okay, so here's where I'm at. I've Mod Podged that on and I've done one coat of sealant with the Mod Podge and I have my insides done. Now what I wanna do is take my scissors and see if I can just sort of trim some of that extra off before I seal that. This has just a little extra on the top as well. And it's probably good. Eh, a little jagged. What are you gonna do? I admit I'm rushing this project, but I have a one-year-old and a four-year-old. It won't be the first craft project I've rushed through. It won't be the last. So that's what it looks like. The only thing I really have left to do is one more coat of Mod Podge on this, as well as the sealant coat on the white. Um, but I'm just letting everything dry first and like I said, I am cutting off a little bit of the inside white that just showed out a little bit. Um, but that's it. I think um, clear tacks like this, just stick it up on the wall. Um, I could glue it, but I don't. I don't think I would do that to my wall or um, ticky tack or those 3M uh, hangers that you can use that has the sort of Velcro-like stuff on them. Um, and that's it. You can see it's kind of shiny because it does have that clear coat of Mod Podge on it, and that's the inside. And I can show you this one really quick as well. I haven't quite finished it. Um, and that's the other one. I haven't done that side yet. But I did do the rest of it while this was gluing. I stuck that one on. Still have to do the clear coat. And um, that one and then the clear coat on the inside but I think you get the idea. If you are looking for these kinds of labels, I made this myself. Um, if you want one, head on over to my page and I will post this oddly looking thing for you to print out yourself. If you want something that says different things. I have incoming mail, outgoing mail, coupons and bills. If you want these sort of labels and you want something different on them, um, just message me on Facebook and I'll um, do some custom ones for you. Um, that's it. Thank you for sticking with me through the longest tutorial ever with my week-long break in between there and uh, I'm just gonna finish these up and that's it what did I learn during these um, clear coats of Mod Podge and really make sure that these are fitting correctly the inside before you glue I did with these I did a little trimming and then like I said I um, I traced this white or I traced this red to do the white on the inside. And um, just like I thought, the boxes were a little different in size. So I sort of had to squeeze that white. So um, 
that was something I learned that I should have done as well as um, like I said I needed to do a few thinner coats of Mod Podge um, I believe I said I got this at Dollar Tree and I gotta tell you it's uh, it's definitely less than half full and I only used it on this so I'm sure I used a tad too much also I don't know why I sealed this and then did the label I should have stuck the label directly on the paper and then sealed the whole thing as opposed to sealing the scrapbook paper gluing the label and then sealing the label that definitely would have saved me some time but there is my very quick hopefully once I get this edited it'll be very quick tutorial on little mailboxes like I said if you have any questions let me know thanks for sticking with me.